Hello, my name's Frances Harding and I wrote Flytrap, The Secret of Fly By Night. Today I'm going to be answering several questions and the first is this. How did Mosca Mai as a character change and evolve in your mind while you were writing these books? Well, from the start, I knew that Mosca wasn't going to be exactly nice. For one thing, she can't afford to be. The odds are too firmly stacked against her. She's a 12-year-old orphan, and worse still, she knows how to read. That's not really a problem in our world, but in her world, everyone's terrified of books. There's a belief that if you read the wrong book, you can go dangerously insane. So people who can read are treated with a certain amount of suspicion. To make things worse, she was born at a time sacred to the little god Palpatatl, he who keeps flies out of jams and butter churns. As a result, everyone regards her as a fly child, someone who's like to be devious and cunning and generally out for themselves. To be honest, when I started writing Fly By Night, that was kind of how I saw her as well. But I soon realised that she's a lot more complicated than that. For one thing, there are people and things she really cares about. And underneath, over time, she's developing quite a strong sense of justice. You don't want to get on the wrong side of Mosca's sense of justice. Second question. If you were setting off on an adventure, which characters from Fly By Night or Fly Trap would you want with you, and why? Well, if I was going to be facing danger, or dangerous people, I'd want Saracen with me. Saracen is Mosca's pet goose, and he's a bit of a force of nature, in the same way that volcanoes and typhoons and floods are forces of nature. Even an ordinary goose can sometimes be strong and aggressive enough to break a leg. Saracen is no ordinary goose. The problem being, of course, that the only person who's really safe with Saracen is Mosca. So, if I had Saracen along, I think I'd probably better have Mosca as well. Now, Mosca could be really useful to have as well. She's smart, she's good at seeing through people, and she thinks fast on her feet. Eponymous Clint, the poet and con artist, might be good at talking us out of trouble. And Lalo could be a good person to have along. She's a 16-year-old smuggler, she's brave and agile, and on a glove on one hand, she has metal hooks like claws that she uses for climbing up onto roofs and so forth. So, useful person to know. Next question. Tell us about the greatest adventure you have been on. Well, I really like travelling. So, there have been a lot of adventures that I've enjoyed. I've scuba dived at night off the Great Barrier Reef and have seen my torchlight reflecting green in the eyes of a shark. I've gone in a raft over a 20-foot waterfall, I've ridden camels in the Sinai Desert, and I've drifted down underground rivers that were lit only by glowworms. But one, one adventure that I did particularly enjoy was a safari in a jungle park in Thailand called Khao Yai. We saw lots of animals, and at dusk we got to watch thousands and thousands of bats all pouring out of this cave complex, and flowing across the sky in this sort of shadowy banner off to the jungle so they could feed. I really like bats. Next question. What was it like writing the sequel to Fly By Night? Did you plan out the story arc completely beforehand or were there surprises? Well, I did plan out the story arc beforehand but there are always surprises. Characters have this annoying habit of doing unexpected things, grabbing your plot and running off in new directions. Now Mosca in particular is quite slippery and tricksy. So near the start of Flytrap, she finds herself at the mercy of some very unpleasant people and tells them a lot of lies. This completely throws their plans into confusion, which is fine, except I didn't expect her to do that. So all my plans got thrown into confusion as well and I had to go back and change the plot in lots of different ways. Final question. If you were setting off on an adventure, what five things would you take with you? First, 
I would take my Swiss Army knife because that's lots of different very useful tools all in one. Second, matches. Fire is useful for all kinds of things, uh, for cooking, as a light source if you're travelling around at night or exploring caves. You can use it to scare away wild animals and wolves and things like that. And you can even use it to cause distractions if you're trying to escape from somebody. Third and fourth, pen and paper. You can use it to leave messages or write a journal of your journey. But you can also use it to start drawing up a map if you're exploring somewhere new and you don't want to get lost. And if you're talking to somebody whose language you don't speak, you can draw little pictures and try and communicate them with like that. Fifth, my hat. It would be crazy to go on an adventure without my hat. Indiana Jones would never make that mistake.